Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be installing a router inside our Proxmox and running it through a VPN. So let's get started. Now, if you guys are looking for a VPN service, I do use PIA in this video, which is private internet access, and I've vouched for them for a very long time. I've been using them for almost nine years now. So if you guys are interested in signing up for our VPN, use the affiliate link down in the description below because it will help the channel a lot. Now, with that being said, let's get started. Now, moving forward for anything that we do, specifically like uh, installing sonar, radar and all this other stuff, it's imperative that we are gonna do this router setup first. Now we are actually just running a router inside Proxmox, we're not running it through the network, so it will be self-contained. We're also gonna be using it under a container, so it's a lot smaller. Heck, you could even run this on about eight megs of RAM if you wanted to, so let's jump to the desktop. Now there's no easy way to really install this, so it's gonna be a lot of information at this one time. Uh, mainly because, yes, it is a container, but we have to build it from scratch. Uh, there is no container option in Proxmox where you could just download a template and have OpenWRT. Now there is a way to run a VM through the helper script that I showed you in two videos ago, uh, but that's a full VM and that uses a lot more resources than we need. So the first thing we need to do before we build this, we need to head over into networking and build a second adapter. Now we're gonna create this and just go to Linux Bridge and we're gonna leave everything blank. We don't need anything here. We just have to create another adapter. This way it actually won't be associated to anything outside of the router. Now, if you wanted to convert your Proxmox into a router and you do have two ethernet ports, you can assign this to the second ethernet port to become the LAN, but that's a whole different thing in itself. So I'm not gonna be going over that. Now with that second uh, network card in created, we can now work on our container. So I'm gonna jump over into shell, also open a new tab. Now you might wanna save this link as well. So we're gonna go over to HTTPS images.linuxcontainers.org slash images. And there we go. I'll leave a link down in the description below for this. Now this website actually contains images that you can just install right into uh, Proxmox. So most of them you can actually go over to your local and CT templates and upload them. Now, the only image that I found that has a problem is OpenWRT, so we have to go through the command line prompt. So here, I'm gonna go over to OpenWRT, find the latest version, which is 23, and I'm gonna use AMD64, head into defaults, and then I'm gonna pick the latest time, or the latest compile, and it should be this one, 1206. Now, in here, they're gonna be a file called rootfs. I'm gonna right-click and copy the link because this is what we need to grab. So I'm gonna go back into our shell and wget and paste that image right there. Now I have one file called rootfs. So what we need to do now is create the template. So from my previous video with Jellyfin, uh, we could create template using the PCT tool or Proxmox Container Toolkit. So PCT create 10, what number do I have free? 106? 106. And we're gonna use the root FS image. We're gonna have to set it unprivileged and put that as one. OS type is unmanaged. Host name is gonna be openwrt. Net dash dash net zero name, and I'm gonna call this etho zero. And then we're gonna add the second nick, net one name equals etho one. And then we're gonna install this onto storage. And we have, uh, let's do local LVM. So local dash LVM. Once you hit enter, it's gonna create this template, unprivileged mode. And you're gonna see a number over here at 106 pop up. And there we have it. OpenWRT is installed. Now we can't run it yet because we still need to configure some settings. Uh, mainly the network because we just added net zero, net one, but we need to associate it with something. So we're gonna go to edit. And from here, I'm gonna change this over to VBR zero. So ethernet zero will be VBR zero. Don't worry about this error because we're not done configuring it. So it's gonna keep popping up. You see this? Every time I hit okay, it's gonna keep popping up. Then I could close this out and then go to this one, hit edit and change this to VB, VMBR one. Hit okay. And then they shouldn't have any errors. Now, 
everything is all set up on this end. Now, you can change the resources. Again, this doesn't take much to run. You can leave at 512. It doesn't even need more than 100 megs. It's very, very low resource. So you could just leave it like this. And uh, for the root disk, four gigs might even be too much for this. Trust me when we put this together. But with that being said, we're going to head back into our uh, shell, which is the PV test, not the OpenWRT, the PV test. We're going to head back into shell. And one thing we do need to allocate is our tunnel. We're going to nano into ETC, PVE, C, LXC, and then it's 106.config. You can see all the configures that we put in here. And what we need to do is the LXC stuff. LXC C group 2 dot devices dot allow colon C 10 colon 200 RWM. And then the next one is LXC dot mount dot entry colon space slash dev slash net and then slash dev again and slash net and then none and then bind and create equal dir this will actually allow it to use the tunnel interface from the host so i'm going to hit that save and that should be that now we could start our open wrt now and because this is a router operating system and it's only acceptable to local networks to allow access to the website. Uh, there's nothing I could do right now to even enter this website. Even though I have console access, I could do IPA to get the IP information, which would be 139. And say I go 192.168.105.139, nothing will happen, it won't connect to it. So to resolve this problem is we have to go into the firewall settings manually through the CLI to allow external AD port. So we're gonna do nano, oh, actually there's no nano in this. So it's vi slash etc config firewall. And here are all the firewall rules. So what I'm gonna do is head over to the bottom. There's some examples that you could just erase. And I am gonna do this one. Uh, I for interacting, and then I could delete, oops, all this. And then now, we could change some of this stuff. So the first one says source. What we want to change this is into WAN. Uh, the source IP, uh, we don't really need, so we could actually delete this because I don't want to lock it down to one IP. Destination is going to be changed to destination port. And this one, we're actually going to do 80, or you could do 443, whichever one you want to use. Uh, proto call, we're going to use TCP and target is going to be accept and once you have this rule in place we're going to be able to access the website to configure open wrt so i'm going to hit escape colon wq to save write and then quit and then now i should be able to hit this website again but at port 80 so i'm going to do http and then i'm just going to do port 80 just to make sure and there we go now we have access to um, port 80 or HTTP and authorization required. You could just type in anything for the password because it doesn't have a password configured. So we do need to set that up. So I'm going to go to password configurations and we're going to set up the password for this. It could be anything you want. And there we go. We could dismiss this. And then now we have our open WRT. And as you can see, there's Etho zero and then Etho one. And there's no link to it because I have nothing connected to it yet. Uh, we could actually attach something to it and then you'll start seeing something come up on there. If I head over to network interfaces, so let's attach something to it. So I'm going to add a new interface and I'm going to go over here and do and call this LAN. And over here, I am going to choose Ethel one and protocol. We're going to be static address, create interface. And from here, we have to configure the rest. We're going to have a DHCP server, a start limit of 100 to 150 global settings. I'm going to create this as a 10 dot network. So 10 dot 50 dot 50 dot one i'm going to keep this as the same net mask i'm going to do this just so we have only 256 ips or 255 ips and we could hit save now we have our land settings we're going to hit save and apply and there we have our little network what we can do now is test this out so we have two debian tests from our last video creating that sdn so i'm going to remove this off the network and change this from our sdn over to vbr1 hit ok I don't, I don't think I need to restart this. It's not grabbing the new IP, so I'm gonna reboot this real quick. 
our OpenWRT, as soon as this comes live in the overview, you should see a new HTC, uh, DHCP lease. And there we go. After the reboot, oh, I could have just refreshed the connection. I got a, a 10.50.50.220 network. And in here, it's the same thing. Now I should be able to get internet as well. So I should be able to ping google.com. And there we have it. Now we're not done yet. We just set up the router and we allow internal traffic from our VMs to pass through this little open WRT router we set up. Next thing we need to do is set up VPNs. So what we need to do is head over to system, go over to software. We're gonna update this list and we are gonna need to install a few packages. So all we need to do is search for open VPN and we are gonna download open VPN, open SSL. So I'm gonna hit install on this. All right, that seems to be done. And then we're gonna to have to install open, well, where is it? There you go, Lucy app open VPN. So we're gonna install that as well. That one will give our the GUI interface. The first one is the actual package for the VPN. All right, now that that is done, refresh the site, control R, and now we have this little VPN. We can go into this area, and now we can actually just add our own little VPNs in here. So. Since I use private internet access, we're gonna search for private internet access open VPN.zip. All right. I'm just gonna click on the first one for a search. They do have like default configuration files, which is the one I'm gonna be using, and it's open VPN. I'll leave a link down in the description below for this exact file, but I just Googled it and I was able to pull it up. In here, I'll open with ARC pull the location that I need. So I'm in New York, so I'm gonna use US New York. Drag this over to my downloads folder. So now I have this. Actually, I didn't need to open that. And then I can go back into my router and create a new connection. So what I'm gonna call this is PIA, and then I'm gonna hit browse, go to downloads, US New York, open, and then upload. Now we have a new one that says PIA and we still have to edit it because we have to use our username and password. So first thing we need to do is actually set up DHCP options. Uh, there are a couple of DHCP options depending on what your use case scenario for private internet access. Uh, the main ones are 241 and 243. So we're gonna do DHCP options, DNS 10.0.0.241 and DHCP options, DNS 10.0.0.243. Now what these two mean, it basically allows you to stream like Netflix and stuff like that through their VPN if you have their DNS support. Now, as far as the authorized user password, here's a tricky one. Now you see this file right over here called etc openvpn pia.auth. That's what we need to type in here. So etc openvpn slash PIA.auth. And then down here is where you would actually just put your username and password. So it would be P1, P whatever. It gives you a P username. And then right underneath there, you would do your password. So that's how it should look like. Obviously, you have to replace the stars with your own password, but you should have everything up and running. Now, we still can't run this yet until we create a brand new interface called Tunnel. So I'm going to add a new interface called Tun0. And this one is just Tun zero i'm creating a brand new one that's why i'm naming it this way hit enter you see ton zero ton zero and dhcp client create interface we could leave that as it save and now we have this new area called tunnel zero we're going to head into network go to firewall head over to the bottom where it says wan i'm going to edit this and add tunnel into this area so tunnel zero will be added into this covered network so i'm going to hit save Save and apply. Let's apply all those changes. Once that is done, we could go back into OpenVPN. Uh, we can make sure this is enabled by default. All right, so all you have to do now is just hit start. If everything worked properly, it should say yes, and then it'll give you a PID. And that's about it. So now we should be tunneling everything through here. Now I did run into a little bit of an issue that I skipped over. Uh, when editing this file, uh, the 106 config, I actually put a slash here by the dev that was like this, and it's not supposed to have it. And that was an issue for me. I wasn't able to create the tunnel interface. So now that everything is working, I'm gonna go over to my dev test, and I'm gonna do 
ping Google again. Okay, it pings back, so we got internet. And if I do a curl, do I have that? App install curl. And if I do curl if config.co, I have a 191.96 IP address, which is the same IP address you would get from PIA uh, using their tunnel. Which means any VM that is actually associated with VMBR1 is now under OpenWRT. Now, if we want to host anything, which we will be like sonar, radar, deluge, and all this other stuff under this OpenWRT, uh, to make sure that everything is working, what I'm going to run is a real quick Python. And I'm going to do Python 3-m simp. Actually, I think it's http.server9000. And there you go. I'm going to be hosting this on port 9000. I have to head over to my OpenWRT, go into firewall, and do a quick port forwarding to that IP address. Add um, test. And over here, external port. I'm going to do 9000. Internal port. Oh, well, internal IP will be this one, 220. And internal port would also be 9000. Save. Save and apply. And now that this is hosting port 9000, I should be able to go to 192.168.105.139 port 9000. And there we have it. This is our same folder that we are hosting right here. And you can see it actually got the HTTP request. And that's how you would forward port. What this means is I actually could just use one IP, which is 139, and host a lot of services, do port forwarding, instead of having to remember five different IPs or six different IPs or however many services that we have, it's all nested into one. So if similar to what we would have in a Docker setup where we have a bridge and a Linux host, and we only have one IP and a bunch of ports. Anyway, that is it for setting up OpenWRT. There's a lot of things you could do with this, not just what we're doing in this environment, but the reason why I chose OpenWRT in this form factor, which is a container, it's because it's really, really small, uh, which I didn't even show you. I'm gonna jump back into desktop and go over to summary. You can see I'm running this, and it's only using eight megabytes of RAM and about 21 megabytes of storage. Anyway, if you guys got any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.